Hey, it's Terry at Crosstech.de and I'm here to show you how to download and install our new XForms Display Records extension for Joomla. So the first thing we need to do is log in on Crosstech.de with your username. Then click on the My Files link that you'll find at the top of the page and scroll down to the com underscore xforms display records dot zip file and click on the download link that you'll find on the right hand side of the page. You'll now be prompted to save that file so let's go ahead and do that. Okay and so now we're ready to go and install it in our Joomla uh, admin. Okay so here we go and we're going to log in. Now we want to go to extensions, install and install. And let's go into the upload package file area and locate the zip file that we just downloaded. Once you've found it, then click on the upload file and install button. You'll see that we've installed the component successfully. So now we should be able to find the XForms component in the component list. And of course, there it is. So now we want to go into the list views section of XForms. And you'll see that there are no views there yet. And that's because you have to create a view for each form display that you want to have on your website. So let's create a new view. And we need to give that view a name. So I'm going to call this my first list view. The type of uh, file data that we're pulling from is going to be breezing forms. So we've got com underscore breezing forms here. I then have the choice to display it in the front end, the back end, or both. And in this case, we're going to display it only in the front end. Uh, I can choose to show an XLS export button so the user could export the data in XLS format. Um, you would do so by checking this box. I'm going to leave it unchecked. You then have the option of allowing the user to print the data. So to do so, you would check this show print button checkbox and we'll leave that checked. Show metadata, uh, pretty self-explanatory. With that checked, it will retain the metadata for your um, page. Show ID column. That relates to the individual um, ID numbers for each of the records that your forms have collected. Um, I'm going to leave that in play here. The next option is to use the view name as the title and it sounds like a good enough title to me so let's go ahead and check that. Then we have the option to only show published records, if applicable. That would apply in a case where, for example, you have a number of form records in your database but only want to display a specific um, set of those, for example. So in that case, you would export the, the data for the form that you wanted to um, have apply, and then you could check this only show published records button. In our case, I'm going to just leave it blank. So now we want to apply our changes by clicking on the apply uh, icon over here on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, so now you'll see that we've got a new little section here on our form as well as some tabs. So now I have to tell XForms what form I want to, to be able to display the data from. And in this case, I want to use my sample quick mode contact form. So I'm going to click on that. Then again, I'm going to click apply over here. Now you'll see that the fields from your form have appeared here on the right hand side of the screen. However, all of them show without being included in the list. So we need to change that. We want to include the data. Um, so that it displays to our user. So I'm going to choose to display all of the data. So with one checkbox up here, I can select all of these. And then I'm going to choose to include in list up here by checking or clicking the, the star there. So now all of my fields will be included in the list. 
and they're also going to be included in a search. So if somebody were to search the records, they would find all of the data from those fields. We have a linkable column, and that's to determine whether each field, as they're displaying the, the data for each record, whether those fields should be linkable. If they are linkable, then clicking on one of those linked fields will lead the user to the actual form results for that um, record ID. So in this case, I'd like to do that, and I'm going to leave those checked. The next column is Word Wrap, and what that is um, for is if you have a field that is going to be long, for example, a message field, if you leave that set to zero, there will be no word wrapping. So if you ended up with a message that was 2,500 characters long, they would all display in a single line across the page, uh, which would create a huge horizontal scroll area. So for convenience, we want to be able to set how many characters there should be before we wrap to another line. And so in this case, I'm going to say 80 characters. Okay, so with the word wrap column done, we're again going to apply our changes. Now I should point out that you don't actually have to click that apply button between everything that you do, but I find it's a good habit to get into because it sort of makes you be conscious of the need to save your work. So let's move on now to the item wrap code column. This column allows you to wrap your uh, field data around HTML tags, font colors, styles, and so on. So for example, I might want my name field to be displayed in a red font. So I'm going to add a font color tag. And then I need to put in a placeholder for the field data. So to do that, we use a curly bracket, the word value, V-A-L-U-E, and close that off with another closing curly bracket. And then we close out the font tag. Then let's say that in the email column, I want my um, column to actually link to the email address using a mail to tag. So I can do that by adding the mail to link. And again, we need to put in a placeholder for the actual email address value that will appear in the form data. So we use a curly bracket, the word value, and close that bracket out. And then sometimes you like to just put the word email in as your link. But in this case, I think I want to show the email address again. So to do that, I'm going to, again, put in the placeholder for it to display the actual email address in the field. So the curly bracket, the word value, and a closing curly bracket. And then we're going to close that tag. And once done, let's again apply the changes. Okay, so with that saved, now we're going to move on to the order by column. This column allows you to change the order of how the fields will be displayed in your list view. So I might want to have my email um, address appear above the name column. So let's do that. Using this little green triangle here, I can click it to move this field up. And you'll see now that our first column is email and the second one is name. The other way that you can do this is to um, change the numbers in the text fields over here. So I want to revert back to my original order of name first and email second. So to do that, I just change these numbers. And once done, I need to save that data. In this case, I don't save it up here using the Apply or Save button. I actually need to click on this tiny floppy disk icon in the Order by Column to save the order. So there we go, I'm back to name first, email second, and message third. And the last column in this section is the published column. This column allows you to choose whether or not you want to display a field in your form. In other words, to publish a field to your form. So I might choose to display the name field and the message field, but want to hide the email field from those lovely spammers out there. So let's unpublish that field. 
by clicking on the green check mark it turns into the red circle with the X in it so it's now unpublished the other way that you could do that if you had a number of fields that you wanted to unpublish at the same time is come over here to this check mark uh, column on the left hand side check the ones that you wanted to unpublish come up here to the unpublished icon at the top of the screen and click on it and you'll now see that both of those fields have been unpublished in my case I do want those fields to be published so I'm going to check them again and go up here to the publish icon to publish them alright so now again I'm going to apply those changes and we're going to stop this video here I think it's probably long enough um, so part two will start discussing how to set up your um, web page to display your form data. So I'll see you in just a bit.